If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, November 21st, 2012. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Today in the Finis Monitor, we'll meet Kirill Blondell, a sophomore at the University of Louisville who is currently one of the fastest collegiate sprint freestylers in the United States. Last weekend at the Purdue Invitational, Kirill swam to a lifetime best in the 100 freestyle, and Kirill joins us now from Louisville, Kentucky. Kirill, good to see you. How are you today? Good to see you, Jeff. I'm going well today. Well, good. So it looks like you're having a great fall season, a good sophomore season. As we mentioned, you had a lifetime best of 43.16 in the 100 free last weekend, 19.90, yeah. another lifetime best in the 50 free a couple weeks ago. It must be yeah. good to be swimming this fast so early in the season. Yes, it feels very good for me, especially how my freshman year it was really an adjustment point during my freshman year, so my sophomore year is basically just ironing out all those pleats that I had in my freshman year and doing what I came here to do, swim fast. So when you talk about a transition in your freshman year, was it like, you're from Trinidad and Tobago, was it just adjusting to life in the United States and to college in, in particular? Yes, it was a lot of a a lot of different things in terms of the school and the training and the entire environment so it's very different for me and it took me a while to understand and get accustomed to living here. At what point did did everything kind of fall into place and you say okay I feel a lot more comfortable here? Uh, I think it's when I went home for the summer I was able to get myself understand with my parents and talk to them get a better understanding of what I'm here to do, how it's supposed to be done, and just execute. Well, that's interesting that you had to go back home to kind of adjust to living in, in Louisville. It's very interesting. Yeah. So as we mentioned, uh, a couple lifetime bests this season. Let's talk about, first of all, that 50 free 1990 in a dual meet against Notre Dame. Did you expect to go under 50, 20 seconds? Well, Actually, I was just going there to do my best. It was on a relay. It was on the first leg of the relay. So I was just going out, uh, giving the relay the best opportunity possible to medal or to qualify for NCAAs. And I just dove in and just swim as fast as I could. I didn't really think about the times or how fast I was going. I just went. So, but it, and it must have been a great feeling to see that 19 on the scoreboard. Yes, it was great. And then, as like you said, last weekend, uh, 43.16 in the 100 free, and then you went 20.1 in your 50 free on the relay leadoff. So at the Purdue Invitational, what was your level of rest for the meet? In terms of that, um, considering my taper, I found like I had a bit of a hiccup in my taper, so that kind of affected my strength level in terms of going out as fast as I wanted to go in the 53. Coming down to the end of the meet there, a lot of things were a lot better in terms of, well, I swam, I'd already swam the other two days, so coming down to the end, I felt a lot better, a lot more confident, calm. I was a lot comfortable, a lot more comfortable to go out and execute as I wanted to. So. Basically, you're saying you were go trying to go for a full taper last weekend? Yeah. Well, I think... But I, I, go ahead, sorry. I had a bit of a hiccup in the taper. Like, I'm still learning a lot of stuff about my body and how to... and the sport and how to really apply everything going into a full taper, into a big meet. So, I think I got it from this one, so I'd be able to go a lot better in the next taper meet. Well, I think it. I guess it's probably a good thing then that you had this uh, attempt at a taper so early, so that you kind of understand what you need to do, especially when it comes around to NCAA's. Yes. 
And then also we want to mention that the 200 free relay that you guys swam at Purdue is now the fastest in the country. Uh, I would imagine an NCAA title is the, the goal of you guys right now? Of course, yes. Well, that's a pretty tough task to, uh, to achieve, but you know, you kind of are on that path. Last spring, you guys were in the final. Um, so it, what is it, what's going on with Louisville now? I mean, a, a great year last year at NCAAs. What's going on? What are you guys doing to keep that momentum from last, last season into this season? Well, I think we have a lot of excitement in the team right now, seeing that we had so many fast swims. Um, the coaches are very motivational, like help us, they pump us up, tell us a lot of positive stuff to help us get in the game and focus going into these meets, psych us up and everything before the meets. And I think that really helps a lot. And I think the faster guys really help because when you see someone swimming fast, you want to get in the pool and swim fast. Too. So I think that really helped drive the team. And everyone just wants to get in on the action. Everyone wants to perform and help the team. So I think that's it's very, very important. Your teammate Jao DeLuca is now the, the fastest guy in the country in the 50 and 100 freestyles. Uh, tell me what it's like to train with him and the other sprinters there at Louisville. It's very competitive. He's a very competitive guy. I'm very competitive too, so it's really a head-to-head -head thing during training. We really go all out. We push one another a lot. To, we, uh, to say the least, we kind of motivate one another by... We kind of motivate one another during training so that we could perform at our best. So if you are not performing well, everyone will get in your case so that you would perform at the level that is expected. So no one lets you take an easy day when, you, when it's supposed to be a hard day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's the key to being a good swimmer, Carol. That's, that's a great, great uh, kind of idea to have when you're training. So as I mentioned earlier, you're from Trinidad and Tobago. When did you start yes. thinking about wanting to come to the United States to go to college? Well, my first thoughts was when I swam, well, I didn't know anything about yards. So I know about long course and short course. And the first time I started thinking about it is when I did a 51.8 a 51 in my 100 freestyle long course. and. George Bovell, George Bovell, he's also a swimmer from Trinidad. Um, he recommended me to come to, well, to start looking at universities, but come abroad to swim, because he was, he swam at Auburn University for quite a while. And that is how I came up with this. That is how I decided to come and swim for a university there. And then why Louisville? At first, Auburn had some financial issues, so he spoke to the coaches here at uh, Louisville, and I think he swam with one of the coaches here, Coach Ran Wakamuka, and that's how I was able to get here. He spoke to them, and he told them I was a really fast swimmer, and they took me up. Well, it definitely helps to have that connection. Now, I would imagine growing up, you watch George swim very fast at the Olympics in 2004, 2008, and just recently in, in 2012. How has his success internationally helped swimming in Trinidad? Well, swimming in Trinidad has definitely gotten a lot faster. I personally look up to George because I knew him from small. He was a big deal in the swimming world, so he helped me a lot in my swimming career. Uh, there's a lot of fast guys in Trinidad right now. Um, a lot of 15 to 17 guys go in, 52s and 51s. So it really has helped bring swimming into, say, a spotlight. It's being recognized more in Trinidad. Yeah, it must be a hard spotlight to, to get into, especially knowing that track and field is so popular there. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it is. Did you ever consider being a runner, or were you always a swimmer growing up? 
I wanted to, but my parents didn't really put me into track and field. It was kind of like swimming. I, it was like an on and off thing with swimming, and then come to the end, I just stuck with swimming. Well, I, it's serving you very well. You got a, you're getting an education here in the United States, and you're swimming very fast. Um, I would, I would imagine you want to be able to go with George to World Championships next summer. Maybe the both of you stepping up on the blocks in the 50 free. Ah uh, yes. Um, right. Currently, I'm planning on going back home to take part in our invitational meet, the Marlins Invitational meet that they'll have back home to qualify for Barcelona. So hopefully I make it there and I think it'll be it'll be a really fun experience to swim with George Rivell at that meet. I swam with him on a relay already and it was really it was a lot of fun. A CAC championships. So I think it'll be fun to swim with him again. Well, we're looking forward to seeing how you do, not just at that invitational, but the um, rest of the season. You've already set the bar high for yourself so we're yes. we're anxious to see how you do and and um, anxious to see what it will be like to uh see you swim fast when your taper goes well yeah me too i'm very i have high expectations for myself and i think once i get everything done with my taper i'd i'd be number one well that's a bold statement to make Carell, but that's what uh 50 freestylers have to do they have to have that confidence so we're glad to hear it Thank you. All right, Carell, thanks very much for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Jeff. Same to you. All right, so that's Carell Blondell joining us from Louisville, Kentucky, and that's going to do it for today's Morning Swim Show. As always, we invite you to join us on SwimmingWorld.com, on Facebook, or on Twitter to catch up with the latest news. I'm Jeff Cummings. Thanks for watching.